What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another Chelsea Daily video for you guys today. In this video we're going to be talking about Kai Havertz and the latest developments in this Kai Havertz saga. We're going to be talking about Thiago Silva and rumours that Chelsea have been offered the defender on a free transfer by PSG. He's going to be out of contract at the end of the week after the Champions League final so we're going to talk about that as well. And we're also going to round things off by talking about Jorginho and rumoured interest from him from yet another Italian club. But before th I start this video, you already know what time it is. It's the time of the video where I say if you haven't done so already, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button and press that bell notification button as well. Get yourself a hat trick so you can be the first guy to know whenever I release any new content on this channel. Also going to say... KitHub UK, if you guys want to get the finest Chelsea shirts at the greatest price for you guys as well. I'm going to leave a link down in the description below. Got this at a nice, cheap price of £30. And I'm telling you, if you guys think it's secondhand, if you guys think it's anything like that, it really isn't. It's the same place where I got that Munich final shirt as well. Is it legit? It's a good shirt and it looks and it lasts long as well. So check it out. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. But let's go straight into the transfer news for you guys today. We're going to start with the news that everyone wants to start off with and the news that everyone is just waiting for at this point. But I'm telling you, it's only a few days away at this point. The way this deal is moving, it should be done within the next week. I know we've been saying that for about a month or two now, but we now know everything that's on the table. We know how close the levels of agreement are. This should be done within the space of a week. I'll, if it's not done, then this seriously is some long ass transfer saga because, and no, if anything, we should be getting this done because we now have eight days left to complete this transfer. But let's go through what we already know. We already know that personal terms are agreed between Havertz and Chelsea. We already know that the contract's agreed. We already know that there's no other suitors available for Havertz and it's a one-man race between Chelsea and nobody else for the transfer. We, the only, we, are, uh, we know that the only thing that both teams are holding out for is the transfer valuation. But last night, Chelsea submitted a second bid of £85 million for the for the German midfielder. Bayer Leverkusen have also slightly lowered their valuation down to 90 million euros, which is showing that there's good levels of communication between both the clubs. And it's also showing that Bayer Leverkusen aren't trying to hold him against as well. We also know that uh, Habits has personally gone to Leverkusen and, they've, uh, and he's asked them to push this deal through. He said multiple times that he wants to leave Leverkusen. That's the reason why he is picking Chelsea over Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. Because if he did really want to go to both those clubs, he would have to wait another year. We already know the situation with both clubs. Both clubs need to sell in order to buy. And in the case of Bayern Munich, they put most of their transfer budget out on Leroy Sane. So they're not going to be spending as much this summer anyway. But we know that Chelsea have submitted the second bid. They've submitted 85 million. It's still not near the valuation. But from what I'm hearing, 90 million is going to be the amount that will be called for both clubs. Bayer Leverkusen will accept a 90 million pound bid. And they've already lowered their valuation down one time already. So you could see them doing it a second time. Leverkusen are more interested in this sort of bid, even if it means that they're getting slightly less cash because we've offered to put more up front. We've offered to pay more the transfer fee up front. And when it comes to the installments with the rest of the cash that we're willing to pay, we've also been more willing to pay it in quicker time. So that would give Bayer Leverkusen more of the cash in a shorter time. And, Bayer Le and, and Leverkusen are going to be happy with that. In the case of them, it means that they can go and look for a replacement with maximum financial power based off the amount of money that we're giving them because they need to replace Kai Havertz as well. And that's also the reason why they gave us that August 28th deadline because they don't want to be coming into pre-season with this still being an issue. They want this transfer fee done as, I, I'm not gonna say as quickly as we do because they would still rather keep on to their best asset for another year if they could. But with the situation that is right now, with Havertz wanting to leave, Chelsea pushing forwards with it, they're trying to get maximum out of it. And if we're willing to give them the most money up front, then that's probably going to be the reason why Leverkusen have agreed to put this valuation forward. So to round things off with the Kai Havertz transfer saga, everything is basically agreed on the table. As soon as the valuation fee is agreed on between both clubs, 
what that means is that he'll just come down for the medical parcel terms won't even need to be agreed and the transfer fee and the whole transfer will be sorted out so this looks like something that will be sorted out in a matter of days it's a question of when it's not a question of if probably in the next few days we're going to hear about a transfer fee finally being agreed and about a day or two afterwards the transfer fee should be announced so Kai Havertz is getting close guys it's been a very long summer waiting for this deal to go through but it looks like it is finally going through Moving on to our next news and it's Thiago Silva. Chelsea have been offered Thiago Silva on a free by PSG. Uh, he is out of contract at PSG at the end of the season. He was already man meant to be out of contract now. But with PSG's progression to the Champions League final, his final game is going to be on Sunday. And then that is going to be it. Thiago Silva is going to be out of contract. And he is looking for a competitive European side that he can still compete for places with. And I'll be real, Chelsea don't really sound like a worse option. Uh, Thiago Silva will be looking at a two-year deal at any potential club that will take him and in my opinion it will be a great stopgap signing for us it's not going to be anything long term we already know Thiago Silva isn't past it but in about two three years time he isn't going to be top level quality so it's going to be a very short term fix for us but with the amount of spending that we've done in our attacking forces in terms of Ziyech in terms of Werner Havertz as well Ben Chilwell coming across the door as well that is at least 200 million being spent I think or somewhere close to that amount we need to be a lot more frugal when it comes to our defensive signings. And Thiago Silva, I'll be real, it's as frugal as it gets. The free signing, the only thing we'd have to worry about is the signing on fee and the wages. The only big talking point between Thiago Silva coming to Chelsea, in my opinion, is those wages. I think he earns over a hundred, over a million a month and that's 320k a week. That's what my notes are saying. And personally i don't think that's going to be too much of an issue in terms of negotiations i think if tiago silva was realistic and he did want that sort of money he'd be going to china or he'd be going to the usa if he wants to stay in europe and he wants to stay in a competitive league with a competitive team he is going to have to take a massive pay cut but I think that will just be something that he will have to agree to. I don't think that's going to be too much of a disagreement. The only big issue is going to be how much of a pay cut does he take. But this would be a great transfer for the younger defenders as well. It would give him, it would give him a mentor. It would give him someone with years of title winning experience and European experience. Only issue on the pitch that I would have with Thiago Silva is that the English barrier may be an issue. But he should be fluent in French with all the years that he spent in France with PSG. So that could create a decent partnership with Kurt Zuma. And Percy, we know Thiago Silva doesn't have the legs to run around the pitch for 90 minutes. He knows it's going to be more about his positioning with him. But Kurt Zuma could cover him when it comes to the legs. He's great at recovery tackles. He's a quick, pacey defender as well. That could be a great partnership. N'Golo Kante in front of him as well, another French speaking player, that could work out as well. English barrier might be an issue but that's just one factor and I'm thinking as a short term solution to our defensive issues, Thiago Silva is definitely not the worst player we could go for. We're looking for someone with experience, we're looking for someone with leadership, we're looking for someone cheap. Thiago Silva, Thiago Silva, Thiago Silva fits the bill on all three of them. So I would take him. Rivals will say, oh, we've been cussing out Arsenal, saying they're retirement home FC and we're signing a 35-year-old. Levels ain't the same. This guy probably isn't going to be starting every single game for us. He'll probably have one game a week and that's it. But it all depends on how we utilize him. If we can put the if we can use the defense and play them around him in the right way and use it to fit his style of play, I think it can work. So as a short-term deal. If nothing else long term shows its head, I would take Thiago Silva. Lewis Dunk, I've already said, I rate him as a defender, but I'd, ra I'd like to see us lower the valuation a little bit. John Stones, I've already said, it, Man City scraps and we're trying to be at Man City's level. If we're trying to be at their level, we don't take their straps and expect them to perform better for us. That just doesn't work out. So, Thiago Silva, I'll be happy to take. Last bit of news for you guys today. Jorginho and Roma are now interested in signing Jorginho. This is a very, very young rumour, so I will say don't take everything as gospel. But Tuta Makato Webb have reported that Jorginho is being monitored by Roma and Paolo Fonseca. Paolo Fonseca, the Roma manager, I'm sorry for butchering that name as the first time, is a huge admirer of the midfielder and we know that Jorginho could potentially be on his way out and we knew that if he was going back he would probably be Italy. 
We thought it was going to be Juventus, but with Maurizio Sarri being sacked, that's kind of thrown those, those ideas in the mud. But he's lost his place since we've come back to lockdown. He's lost his place to Billy Gilmore and to Kante being preferred as a lone DM. And I will also say, when Jorginho has played for us, he hasn't really set the world alight since lockdown either. Best game he's had is that Crystal Palace game and the Manchester United semi-final as well. Except for that, whenever he's played, he hasn't really looked that good. Well, I'll say Wolves as well. But he's looked at his best when we're coming on to kill games. And that's looking like his best role in the team right now. But for how much you can get this player for, we signed him for 57 million. I really think we could still get 40, 50 million off this player. You don't keep a player of that quality on the bench. And you don't keep him for that specific role to kill games. He's still got a place in the team. But his role has greatly diminished from what it was last season under Sarri. Or even the start of the season under Frank Lampard. And I think Jorginho, he's been a... I'll say he's been not loyal, it hasn't been long enough to say loyal, but he's been a good servant. He's had a lot to deal with in the two years, he's had fans turn on him, he's had questions about whether he's a good enough player and I think he's proven that all wrong. And I think the only reason why this hasn't worked out now is the emergence of Billy Gilmore and also I don't think he's fitting Frank Lampard's newer plans for the team. And in that case, it just is what it is. You can't blame Jorginho too much on it. You can't even blame Lampard for it too much either. Lampard knows what he wants. If Jorginho isn't fully in his plans, I will say we might as well get rid of the right fee comes in. I wouldn't mind keeping him because, like I said, he can kill off a game very well. He's good at longing a game out. But he's worth so much more than that. So if a right fee comes in, I could see us selling him. But guys, this is the end of my transfer daily video for you guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my points. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. Check out uh, LJ Made It. I'm leaving a link down in the description. He's the guy that makes all the music, makes all the beats and the thumbnails for this video as well. So check him out. I will leave a link down in the description below. And check out Carefree20 as well, which is the code to get 20% off all of his music. And yeah, like, subscribe and I'll see you soon. Take care. Up the chills.